This lesson is on inventory systems. With inventory systems, there's no specific format or statements or anything. So it's important to understand the different methods that you use and be able to use them practically. All examples are different and they generally ask you for different things. So if you understand and practice, this can be a relatively easy section. Um, and it would, a lot of this is theory based and there will be ex worked examples videos up sometime where we go through an example of this. But just, imp it's important to understand the theory behind it first. So we start off with the, our first method, which is, which is specific identification. That is when each item is assigned their actual price. So it's generally used with expensive items and when there's a small number of units. So a good example for this is watches, because watches are very expensive items and you generally do not have a lot of units of watches. So you don't actually have a lot of watches in your shop at one time. Um, and it's important that they are recorded at a specific price because each watch is um, a different price. So you can't necessarily group them with an average price. Um, so that is specific identification. Then the second method is FIFO, which stands for first in, first out. And it's literally what it sounds like. Whatever comes in first, goes out first. So whatever is purchased first is sold first. So your oldest stock is always purchased, is always sold first. Your stock on hand is made up of mostly your recently purchased stock. So it's the most recent stock that is going to be left over at the end. This is generally when it comes with to perishable goods because you want to sell your older stuff first. So expiry dates can be in your favor. Um, it's important to note in an example, your closing stock will be made up of the last purchase you have and sometimes a little part of your second last purchase, depending on how big your closing stock is. So for example, if your closing stock units were 500 units and you wanted to work out what the value of this was, um, you would take, however, say now your last purchase was there were 300 units purchased. So the 500 units closing, a part of this would be the 300 units from your last purchase and the remaining 200 would be from your second last purchase and you would use the relevant prices for that. So to, it would be the 300 times by the per unit cost that you got your 300 at. You would multiply them together and then add your 200 from your second last purchase and their relevant cost price and add those together. We then move on to the third method, which is the weighted average. This is generally when you have large amounts of small identical items. A good example are tennis balls. Tennis balls, they are all the same. They generally aren't radically expensive items such as watches, which makes them easy to have a weighted average price. To work out your average cost price, you take your total cost of items purchased. So this is the total amount you've paid for all your tennis balls, divide by the number of tennis balls you bought. So the total number of items purchased. So if you bought 60,000 rands worth of tennis balls and you bought 6,000 tennis balls, it would be 10 rand each because you would say 60,000 divided by 6,000 and that would give you 10. Okay, with, the, with weighted average, it's always the average cost price that is used. So each item is always going to be made at your average cost price. So if last month, you bought your tennis balls at 9 Rand 50 and they've gone up to 10 Rand. You would find that your, your opening stock would actually be a little bit less with per unit. Your per unit cost would be a little bit less with your opening stock than with your purchases. But then you would, you would then find a average cost price by using the formula. Your closing stock amount 
is your closing stock units multiplied by your average cost price. Okay. Those are the three methods. Um, they can ask, generally in a test or exam, they'll ask you two of them and they'll say, a certain product is sold using one system and a, another product is sold using a different system and ask you questions on either or. Um, I don't want to make it like this is going to happen, but FIFO and weighted average are sometimes the more difficult ones. So that's why they sometimes ask those more. Um, then we have to work. These are just little side notes which don't fall into any specific method. To work out your closing stock units, so this is the amount of stock you have on hand at the end of the month, you would have your opening stock plus all your purchases plus any carriage minus returns minus how many you sold. So basically it's the amount of units you have at the beginning plus anything that you, any units you added onto that minus anything any returns and then you minus what you've sold and that will give you the number of units that you have at the end. Your cost of sales amount is going to be your opening stock plus purchases plus carriage minus closing stock so minus returns and then minus closing stock. That will give you your cost of sales amount. This formula is very important. Your closing stock value depending on the different system will determine the different the different methods to calculate that is all for inventory systems